Hello, Internet. So I had posted um, this magical smoke bomb ray of sunshine gif. A lot of people were asking me how to do it, and I get asked to do tutorials a lot. Um, I'm not, I don't have high quality equipment for quality recordings, so I'm just gonna use my little quick time for now, and maybe one day I'll actually invest in something real. But for now, you're gonna work with what you got. So I am going to walk you guys through a step-by-step -step process of how I did, we'll call it Mike and Jenna's smoke magic gift. It's two o'clock in the morning and I've been listening to Careless Whispers on saxophone and I can't sleep, so you're welcome for this. Things you will need, um, Photoshop. I have Adobe Photoshop, whatever the most updated Creative Cloud one is. This is all I got, so I'm very sorry, PC people, if some of the stuff looks kind of weird. My bad. Um, I am on a Mac, so. First thing you wanna do, you want to bring in your file to Photoshop. There we go. Okay, next thing you wanna bring up, so some people use a screenshot for this. I personally like to do a separate photo layer because screenshots of video on you know some of the lower and video recording stuff are kind of like pixelated, not not as cute, not as good as I like them to be. So I took a little extra picture right in the middle of when I'm recording my video footage for my GIF. So, so here we go. Always make sure that your layers are on the same length of time. That's, I mean, it's just not gonna work otherwise. It should be a given, but you know, I feel like every time I go into it, I have to make sure people understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so your masking layer for this one, you wanna make sure that it's more or less matched up evenly. I like to do for this one particularly because there's a little bit of movement. So I'll make the masking layer slightly larger to encompass like those small bits of movement. Cause you can kind of see where the video and they kind of move back and forth. So if you make it bigger, that kind of covers all of that area, surface area, so. Once you have that how you want it, shaboom shabam. The next thing, make this layer invisible, add a new blank layer on top of here. So from here, what you wanna do, you wanna go to your paintbrush um, for this one, you're probably going to want it a slightly larger size. Make sure your opacity is at 100%. That would be helpful. Alright, and then what you want to do, you want to paint all of your areas that you want to move. And because this is the most time-consuming part, this is the part that I like to do first. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be exact, except for right here on the edges or else you're gonna get a ghosting effect, so. Again, this does not need to be perfect. You can go back and edit this when we do our masking thing, but try and get us as, as close as you need to. Cause you don't wanna have to do, you know, a ton of tweaking and all that. Okay, so once you are done with your paint layer, you're gonna wanna make this layer invisible, bring this layer back up, make sure it's selected, and then what you wanna do is hold down your command or control layer, and then click on this. And it will select everywhere that you painted. Go down to this little buddy, this is your layer mask, and hit that. So you see, you can see the ghosting effect right here, what you need to do is invert this. And so you see how this is reversed. So you want what you wanna do is press Command or Control on PC, I, and that will invert it. All right, so once you've gotten to that point, delete that, don't need it anymore. You can kind of look and see, oh, you can see a little ghosting right here. Yeah, so 
So now this is where you can kind of like fix stuff. Uh, make sure your mask is selected. Use your paintbrush tool. Yeah. Kind of like fix all these funky, ghosty edges right here, which will be inevitable unless you're really, really super particular when you're first doing your painting layer. All right. So here's where we make your perfect loop. What you want to do so you need to bring your timeline up too. This sometimes can help if you have a bunch of layers on here. So select your video layer. Mine is called layer one. And put it kind of in the middle of wherever. It doesn't have to be exact, but try and get as close to the middle as you can. And what you wanna do is right click or control click and hit split clip. So that's gonna give you two layers right here in your little video group one. What you want to do is select your second layer, specifically, and bring it to the front. Alright, next thing you want to go is this little buddy. And we're going to get the little crossfade. Pull that transition down. There we go. I like to play around with, you know, how long and short it is, because that will kind of control how flawless your loop ends up being. Um, it's really about personal preference, but this is what I like to call the crossfade method. Um, and for smoke, water, a few other things um, that don't have really harsh defined lines, this is going to be your easiest one. And these are typically, if you're starting out, these are gonna be the easiest ones for you to do. Look how pretty that is. It's so nice. He looks so nice. I have to be real because I totally freaked out when we first when we did this one. I like had the idea in my head and I was like, guys, if this works out, I will probably lose it. I will and I did this whole time. I've been losing it completely. So that's honestly that's it. That's all you need to do for creating your GIF. So at this point, you can either Save this one as your as your GIF already by going to File, cut that off, but oh well, Export, and then Save for Web. But what I like to do to kind of save time, I go to Export, Render Video, give it a new name and all that stuff, lots of caps, choose Document Size, and I render it as a video, and I'll show you kind of the nice way, you know, how this kind of saves time and everything. Saves time on resizing too, especially if you're working on like a 13 inch MacBook like I am. All right, so once it's exported, you want to go to File, Import, Video Frames to Layers. We want to find where our little buddy is. Here, hit Open. And from here, I like to limit to every two frames. Um, that kind of reduces your file size too because it goes every other frame instead of every single frame, which I promise you is more than enough. Yes, yeah, so for this one, 36 frames, more than enough. All right, so from here, you can resize it. And so the biggest I really like to go is 1200 or so pixels on the longest side, but for this one, I think we'll just go to 900. Resize it right there. And then you want to select all of these, and that way you can click the little arrow, and this is going to be your frame delay. So this is how you can slow it down, speed it up, wherever. You can kind of check and see how it's going to look. Oh, that looks so nice. So nice. All right, so from here, you want to go to File, click the right thing, File, Export, Save for Web. So from here, you can actually, if you want to preview this in a browser, it'll show you exactly how it's going to show up on the internet, which is such a great feature. Um, I keep, I have like little presets and stuff that I like to keep this at. Um, you want to make sure especially if you have a lot of gradients or like multiple colors that your dither 
is at 100%. Because if not, you see you get those little weird gradient looking things. It's not pretty. And yeah, it does take up a lot more space, but uh, it looks better, obviously. And so from here, you hit save. You name it. Give it a little, you know, whatever, special name so you can tell everything apart from one another. And you're done. And that's it. So from here you can upload to Squarespace or Imager or Giphy or whatever platform, you know, host your host GIFs. And then from those 30 party, third party sites, you can post on Facebook um, and all that good stuff. I hope you enjoy this little lowdown of how I created this GIF. Not too complicated. I think the, you know, the most difficult thing is kind of conceptualizing what you want your gift to look like. Once you have that down and you know what you're doing, the rest is easy peasy. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe sometime if people like this, I'll post more of these. But for now, over and out.